Two balls and a strike to count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. This is way back. Walk the ball. Chris Taylor. What's up, everybody? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Matthew Moreno, Blake Williams of DodgerBlue.com. We are continuing in our series of MLB.com's positional rankings, moving to the starting pitchers today. And for the folks just watching or listening, I'll give you a second. The Dodgers had one player ranked on just one of the four lists. We're focusing on the Shredders list. The Dodgers had one starting pitcher ranked. Can you guess? Which starting pitcher was on that list? I will end the suspense. Julio Urias was the number 10 starting pitcher, according to the Shredder on MLB Network. Matt, I'll start with you. My initial reaction was, are we sure Julio Urias is the best starting pitcher on the Dodgers roster this year? (laughs) Well, excuse me. That was definitely a different reaction than what I had. Mine was only 10th. uh, And I I know we'll get into the list and maybe where I think he should have placed instead. Uh, But to answer your question, I think... Yes, in 2023, he will be their best starting pitcher. Blake, Clayton Kershaw, I think, deserves some mention. He did, he did get some, uh, like, just missed, according to the Shredder. But if you had to pick one pitcher for, for 2023, Julio has given you more innings. Would you take Julio over Clayton Kershaw? I think on an innings per innings basis, I'm taking Kershaw. He was better last year pretty much all across the board. But as we know, Julio threw about 50 more innings, which is valuable to a club, especially one that has a lot of questions in the rotation like the Dodgers do. So I think when you're putting everything together, Julio is ranked ahead of Kershaw, just the total package. But Kershaw, I think, does have the little bit of the talent lead right now. Yeah, I mean, you look at at this list, obviously, from an ERA perspective, both guys were great. Julio finished third in Major League Baseball with a 2.16 ERA. Um, it's worth noting Tony Gonsolin, who threw 130 innings, was second in Major League Baseball with a 2.14 ERA. Kershaw was sixth, 2.28. So Julio slightly edges him out there, but Kershaw had a better expected ERA and a much better fielding independent pitching despite that 50-inning gap that you mentioned, Blake. Kershaw actually had a higher wins above replacement than Julio. That said, at the end of the year, Julio Rios finished third in Cy Young voting a year after finishing seventh in 2021. So, Matt, you mentioned it. Julio's 10th on this list. Kershaw is in the just missed category. Give me your breakdown of of kind of where he belongs. I'll I'll read off the starting pitchers. Corbin Burns, one. Verlander, Rodon, Scherzer, Alcantara, Otani, Freed, Wheeler, DeGrom, and Urias is the one through 10. Yeah, I think the list in general, you know, frankly, seeing DeGrom down at ninth, I think is a little low. And obviously, I think he's uh, hurt by being hurt, if you will, <laughs> and not, you know, pitching a ton. Carlos Rodon, you know, nothing against him. I wouldn't I, I wouldn't have him as high as third. So I think the Shredders list in general just kind of, kind of needs to be shuffled around. And ultimately, I think Julio is deserving of placing like sixth or seventh, I think is a little bit more fair, in my opinion. Blake, do you agree with that assessment? Um, not entirely. I kind of feel like Julio could be anywhere from like 7 to 15 even. The state of pitching in baseball is just so good right now, and there's so many talented pitchers. Like, you, There's no like right answer for who should be ranked where, I think. DeGrom is definitely too low. I, I do agree there. He's like the only one I really have a problem with on that list, but... Yeah, like I was saying, there's just so many good pitchers. You can make a case for all of them, and you're just kind of splitting hairs. Yeah, Julio's an interesting one. Um, As I was joking with Blake right before we hopped on, I have been on Julio's island for a long time. I had Julio ahead of Walker Buehler. Typically, it was, is is Walker Buehler the best starting pitcher on the Dodgers roster? Matt has had this conversation with me multiple times, and my answer would be, are are we sure Julio Rios isn't better than Buehler? Obviously, Buehler injured Julio continuing to improve, but... There's always been questions about Julio. The strikeouts per nine is not great. It's less than nine, so less than a strikeout per inning. Um, Some of the stat cast numbers, just a 32% whiff rate. Those are the numbers that people sometimes point to and and have questions. It's why his fielding independent pitching, his FIP is so low, which is why his war is so low, according to fan graphs. That said, 96th percentile for hard hit rate. 88th percentile for expected ERA, 85th percentile for average exit velocity, 85th percentile for expected batting average. The spin rates are all elite, 97th percentile fastball, 94th percentile curve, 77th percentile chase rate, 79th percentile walk rate. Blake, 
I know you kind of live in the same metrics that I do here. Where do you stand on Julio? Because there are people, whenever we post videos like this, and we will get some of them in the comments, that will tell us Julio is overrated, that he's getting lucky, the wins, the ERA don't really match. I look at the hard hit rate, and, and those type of metrics to me matter. And you kind of hinted, hey, 7 to 15. I mean, are you kind of in the skeptic range as far as is Julio one of the better pitchers in baseball? I think he is really good, and there's definitely something to him limiting hard contact. That's how he is so good. But when I'm looking at, like, the top starting pitchers, I am looking for that pure stuff, and he doesn't have, like, the 100-mile-per-hour fastball or the elite sliders that a lot of pitchers have. So I think he is really good, and he's great at limiting contact, and that's how he succeeds. But there are pitchers, I think, that are better than him, and I trust more. And part of that is because with the elite stuff, you can make a mistake and it won't affect you as much as if you're living to be perfect and have to make every pitch at the right time. Because when you miss and you're not with that elite stuff, that's when like home runs happen and you get into trouble. Yeah, Matt, the velocity got as high as 95.1 back in 2019. It dipped to 93.1 this last year. And yet I would look at again and say two and a half ERA in 2019, 3.27 in 2020, 2.96 and 2.16. He's gone under three, three of the last four seasons. The one season he didn't was 2020. That was the shortened season. You might remember he had a decent postseason outing. So Matt, where do you stand? I mean, I know you're a big wins in ERA guy. The, the 37 wins the last two years. This guy should be like top three, right? Yeah, I mean, he's not. I won't necessarily put him in an ace at an ace level just yet. Uh, he, if he had 40 wins, then maybe you know, <laughs> if it was a nice round number, uh, no. Nah. But I think with him, you know, for me in evaluating uh, Julio, it, I think we've seen you know progression over the last two years, three years, you know, however you want to look at it. And in particular with 2022, you know, you saw it was a little bit of give and take with the Dodgers of them sort of giving giving him the rope to say, OK, like, you know, you can the pitch count is off like we're not handling you with complete kid gloves now. But also you kind of have to show that you're going to be able to get through a lineup sort of three times. And that was something that Dave Roberts discussed uh, at FanFest. He said, I forgot after which start during the regular season, but Dave Roberts said that he challenged Julio to be better, be more efficient, learn how to navigate lineups. And so I think. We saw him take that step forward last season and it put him in, you know, now this list of, you know, at least in some regard, an upper echelon of starting pitchers. And I think if he continues to build off of that, you know, I'm I'm interested to see where is he going to place sort of next year? And obviously the shredder is not, you know, definitive end all be all. I think, you know, it's all, it's subjective certainly. Uh, But just, you know, in terms of his growth, I think that'll be, if he puts together another strong season, I think we could be sitting here next year saying, you know, he is a, a bona fide ace, a number one pitcher, even though, you know, Blake brought up great points of not having the pure stuff that you're accustomed to seeing from, you know, maybe a Max Scherzer or a Justin Verlander and he, frankly, even Walker Bueller when he's healthy. But I think Julio still has the weapons, kind of the the savvy and definitely the, uh, the demeanor to uh, put himself in that conversation of being, you know, a top five, six pitcher. Yeah. Now, obviously, the the thing overhanging all of this, he's 26 and a half. He'll turn 27 in August, set to be a free agent at the end of this season. Matt and Blake, I'm going to put you on the spot here and and play a game. Fast forward 12 months. The three of us are sitting here. We're talking about the 2024 Shredder rankings. If I told you there was one Dodger that finished in the top 10 and Julio Arias qualifies for the sake of this conversation, is Julio Arias the Dodger that that is, is Julio Arias the best Dodger pitcher? heading into 2024 or does Bobby Miller, Gavin Stone make a jump? Does Dustin May or Tony Gonsolin make a jump? Is Walker Bueller the best pitcher back after Tommy John? Blake, I'll come to you first. Uh, If Julio were to come back, give me the best pitcher on the 2024 Dodgers. Can I say Otani after they trade for him? (laughs) Oh, come on. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I would say Julio has the best chance of finishing as their top pitchers. Um, Kershaw, if he stays healthy, I'd put him there, but I'm not sure we can fully trust that yet. So uh, I'll go with Julio, yeah. Matt? Yeah, Blake took my Otani <laughs> angle. Uh, I'm not. I'm going to say Julio is not the Dodgers' top pitcher next season on the Shredder rankings because I don't think he will be with the Dodgers. Okay. I mean, and Dustin May, I think, is a wild card here. I think he's one of the guys that if he can put together a healthy season – he has the stuff that Blake is talking about. I mean, if you want to talk about a guy that passes the eye test, it's arms and elbows and knees flying at you with the 101 mile an hour 
you know, two seamer that's moving six inches from left to right. And so he's, he's just the guy I would watch. Obviously Bobby Miller, if he ever figures out control and takes a jump, he could be another guy who has the stuff. Um, so just a couple names to watch, but I, we, we forget easily. Julio Reese is 26 years old. <laughs> like he's 26. Tony Gonsolin, like wasn't even in the major leagues yet at 26 years old. It feels like. So even as long he's being in our, he's, he has been in our lives to pretend like we have seen the best of Julio Urias um, can in some ways be deemed to be a little bit short sighted. I know this is going to be controversial. So let us know in the comments, what you think below is Julio overrated, underrated. Should Clayton Kershaw have been on this list? And who do you like for 2024? Is Dustin May the Dodgers best pitcher? Is it Julio? Is it Otani? Let us know in the comments. That's Matt. That's Blake. As always, we appreciate you joining us. My name is Jeff. Enjoy the rest of your day. And as always, go Dodgers.